Hello sci-fi fans, I'm Moonwalker1138 and welcome to a very special video review of the brand new Star Wars Vintage Collection Smuggler's Run Millennium Falcon. Now, I have been waiting for this vehicle for a very long time. I got to visit the new Galaxy's Edge theme park and the Smuggler's Run experience last year and I gotta say, it just completely blew me away. And now with this magnificent vehicle before us, it really lets you get to take home a big part of that thrill and excitement. But before we take a closer look at the main attraction inside, Let's take a small look at the two main figures that come inside of it. So here are the two main figures that come with the Smuggler's Run Millennium Falcon, Chewbacca and Hondo Onaka. So let's just take a quick look before we get to the ship itself. And now first off, we've got our good old co-pilot Chewbacca. Nothing much to say, great articulation. I think this figure's been reused in a lot of sets and released on a single card over the, over the years many times. He's got a great face paint there, no smudges or anything. The detail really pops. I like all the various you know colors in the fur. And then he's got his good old bowcaster. Not a lot of, it just seems to be all one solid color, but it still looks really good. You can see the details are all there. He's got a separate sculpted bandolier, which is attached nice to him, and it doesn't adhere to his articulation or hinder it in any way. And I think everyone has at least one of these Chewbacca's in their collection, so we'll have nothing much to say about him, and we'll put him to the side. And now we'll take a look at the brand new figure of Hondo Onaka as featured in the Galaxy's Edge experience. Um, Gotta say, I was never one of a huge fan of Hondos from Rebels, and then, but I think, I think he's starting to grow on me after the ride and all of his appearances in Rebels and whatnot. Very nice figure. I like all the extra detail. They they usually don't make this detailed figures when they come with big sets like this, which is bizarre. But like I said, this one actually turned out pretty well. Nice head articulation. The details, like I said, no paint blotches. Everything's lined up where it should be. Comes with a nice blaster. His cape is uh, very soft plastic, so it doesn't really get in the way of his articulation, and he has a holster for his blaster. So, we've taken a look at the figures. Let's take a look at the actual Millennium Falcon itself. And now, here she is in all of her glory, the one, the only, Millennium Falcon. The fastest hunk of junk in the entire galaxy. This thing is massive. I apologize in advance if I use that word too much, but I mean, look at this. I mean, you got the figures down there, just to give you some perspective. And then just look at my hand. I'm a pretty tall guy, and that, you know, look at that. It's huge. Now, before we actually get into the bulk of the review, I just want to say that, yes, this thing does appear to be a repackage of the 2008 Legacy Millennium Falcon. Now, that thing was amazing, and this is nothing short of that. But, however, this has, a, in my opinion, a much nicer paint job. And on top of getting things like the extra radar dish over there, you do get to swap those out. It still has everything that came with the Legacy Falcon, but like I said, with a better paint job. And now, it comes with lights and sounds from both the original Star Wars trilogy and the new Galaxy's Edge Smuggler's Run ride. So we'll take a look at all those in just a second. I think the first thing we should do is take a look at the exterior features of the ship before we take a deep dive inside. So let's take a closer look, starting with the boarding ramp on the left. So the first exterior feature I want to show you guys is the boarding ramp. Now, this is a really cool feature. Uh, you just hit this button here, you've got lights right under there, and then the bridge, the drawbridge comes down, and then characters are able to walk up the ramp. Just take a look. That's just so cool. No matter how many times I see it, that's always going to put a smile on my face. Let's take another look from this angle. So we'll pull it back a little bit. Very cool, and those lights do stay on for about a good 15 to 20 seconds. Just really adds to the whole experience. This is a very, very nice model that I feel like every major Star Wars fan should have in their collection. And that just folds right back up, and then let's move on. So before we go on to any other features of the ship, I really just wanted to give you guys a closer look at how much better I feel like the paint job is on this one than the Legacy Falcon. I mean, you really, look, let's take a deep dive. I mean, all of these, you got the buttons here, but those blend in a lot nicer, I think. I mean, you got the rust, you got the wash, the worn, the uh, carbon scoring. I mean, it just, it has that use and abuse look that we've come to love from the Star Wars movies where it's a future, but it's a future that's run down, so to speak. I mean, all that detail just pops now with the extra wash and weather. I mean, let's take a closer look at all the Greedleys on the side there. I mean, just fantastic. You got the cockpit. None of this actually looks like a generic toy, I must say. Like, the people at Hasbro and Disney Engineering, they really outdid themselves in the paint job, and I feel like no one is ever gonna, like, 
get less than what they pay for this thing. Like everyone is guaranteed like a superb paint job. I mean, all this just, I mean, you could probably trick someone and stay, say this is a studio model if they were visiting and you showed them this in your collection. It's, in my opinion, it is truly that impressive. All right, so enough gushing over the paint job. Let's take a look at some extra features. So another amazing feature about this vehicle is that you do get the iconic quad laser cannons both sitting up here on top and down here at the bottom, if you guys can see that, it is also articulated. But this one has a feature connected to this lever over here and we do have the lights and sounds hooked up. We've got it set to the Galaxy's Edge sounds because that's gonna be the main feature of this review. So up here, you'll notice that again, these are articulated, but I'll try not to move this to the side just yet. Uh, these two down here are flick missiles. Uh, well, they are spring-loaded missiles, sorry. And then you'll notice there are little knobs right here and these posts, so when you move this lever, it'll make uh, the lights and sounds of gunfire. And when you swing it all the way over to the side, it'll hit that button and release the spring and shoot the missile. So let's take a quick look at that. Super cool, and now my missiles are gone. But that's to be expected, so let's keep going. So a nice little new addition to this Vintage Collection Smuggler's Run Falcon is that you do get the the uh, square dish featured in episodes 7 and 8, which I'm actually kind of fond of. You do get both, so you can't easily just swap these out. These just plug off. I do have the round one inside the ship in a little cargo space, and we'll take a look at that later. I'll swap over to the classic trilogy sounds, and we'll do a whole run through of that really quick. So you get this little uh, knob over here that rotates the radar dish, and there's another uh, feature attached to that that goes on on the inside, and we'll get to that in a little bit. That's really cool, I actually like that a lot. It does, say what you will about the new, about the sequel trilogy, but I don't know, this radar dish, it still fits in aesthetically perfect, in my opinion, with the Falcon. And then we'll move on over here to the other docking port, docking ring, whichever it's called, and, uh, Inside, there's an escape pod that's only ever been mentioned in the movies and actually made its debut in The Last Jedi. And what I like about this, it's a simple little feature. It's a little cargo space or a little docking port for a small little ship inside. But I love the sound effects that just add an extra level. So you'll take a look. That's really nice. So there's little sensors that the little buttons that the thing switches over. And then when we pull out the little uh, escape pod, there's actually a little docking or takeoff sound from that. I gotta say, it's small, but it's perfect. It's just a little one-man escape pod, with little spring-out missiles, or sorry, little side cannons. There is a missile in the bottom, and that's a little lever that releases it, and it opens up. And you get some pretty decent detailing in there. I mean, not much. This is probably gonna be a less utilized feature, but it's still good that they gave us extra paint apps where we wouldn't expect them to. And then we'll just put that back in, and it still makes the noises, so you got to line that up. And then lock it back up. Very nice. So another cool feature about this ship is that it actually does come with a fairly decent amount of firing missiles, like I already demonstrated with the cannon, and then the escape pod down at the bottom. And you also get three concussion missile launchers here in the front, and then this middle one actually does have accompanying sound effects. We'll fire that off in just a second. And yeah, they all pretty much fire, but this one in the middle makes a sound. So you got the actual harpoon sound effect that plays during um, a certain part when you go on the Smuggler's Run ride. I think if you hold it down, it'll play like a full, a full sound bit with like a sound effect and dialogue. So really quick, I want to show off another feature that I feel like gets overlooked a lot of the times, and it's just right here. You do get the little buzzard cannon that makes a brief appearance in The Empire Strikes Back when they're all trying to leave Echo Base, and the Falcon is just being uncooperative, as it famously does sometimes. So yeah, that just pops out really nice, has a good range of motion, and then it also does have a little missile down there. Nice. Very nice. They didn't have to put that in there, but I'm really glad they did. So over here we do have the cockpit and it is huge, like the detail in this is perfect. So we just lift up the canopy here and we see that we do have our pilots Hondo and Chewie 
Uh, this thing is actually capable of seating all four figures, just like in the movies. I mean, I have a, I have gone ahead and applied all the stickers. I know a lot of people are probably going to be on the fence about applying those with the risk of them peeling, but I just went ahead and did it anyway, just for a full retrospective review on this item. So yeah, it's really nice. Uh, I will say, well, for one thing, the seats are adjustable. So if you have a taller figure like Chewy, the seat that he's sitting on, the front two seats can like push forward and back. So for someone that's, like Chewy that's taller, he is able to sit in there, and then Hondo sits right there. I will say that they are mostly just kind of frictioned in their seats. It is a little, little, little bit of a wiggling jog to get them to sit in and look nice, but it's not too terrible. Anyone can really figure that out. And now let's take a look at the back of the ship for what I feel is probably the most impressive feature on this vehicle, is the engines and the many LED lights and sounds that accompany with them. So we'll just take a quick run through of all those before we get to the interior of the Falcon. The harpoons. Now let's go get that coax yum. Evasive <laughs> maneuvers. R5, damage report. <laughs> Weapons are online. So now that we've taken a look at all the features on the outside, let's take a look at the inside. And we'll do that by taking off these two panels right here and right here. That's that one. Now we just want to position that out of the way and slim that up. And it's as easy as that. All right, now let's get a closer look at the inside. So here's the interior of the ship, and I think it's just about as equally impressive as the outside of this playset. For one, you've got a little storage room right here you can just open that up and you can see i've got the classic trilogy radar dish and let me just pull that out and yeah you got a pretty nice space in there you've got like a whole extra table or a bed whatever you could fit extra characters or accessories in there and that just closes up you've got the medical bed where luke skywalker recovers after the empire strikes back and i believe if you have the 2002 original trilogy Bespin Luke figure. It comes with a little tourniquet over his arm, and you can just plug that in right there. So I thought that was really cool that they kept that. Uh, there's the gunner chair. You could stick a figure so he's manning the gun. Unfortunately, it's only one. There's not two for both guns, but I did think it was cool they kept little clear glass windows for the top and the bottom. I mean, and the paint apps are still very impressive. I like that they did go with a little darker shadowing on this vintage collection one and the old one from 2008. And over here, I guess, is a little space for more weapons, just some accessories. And then it's nice that they kept the little peg holes or little pegs for you to put your figures if you're on display, if you want this open, if it's sitting on your collection or your shelf. And then this spot over here is a little smuggler's compartment from A New Hope, and I thought that was really cool. So I'll just pull that out. Oh, it can be a little tough sometimes. There we go. Sorry about that. And I gotta say, it's actually pretty deep. You could fit a whole, probably two and a half figures in there, I guess. I mean, it goes from all the way to about, like around under here, under the ship. So, I mean, you could take your Chewbacca figure here, stick him in there. Yeah, perfect. He's got enough room. Like I said, you could probably fit maybe three if you really cram him in there panel back on, get those teeth lined up, Come on. there we go, and Chewie is hidden from Imperial forces or anyone else that's not welcome aboard, and 
we can head over to the main galley of the ship. You got this, like I said earlier, there's this little lever here, this knob that rotates the sensor dish, but it also has a little training droid on a, on a little string here. So if you got like a Luke or a Rey or any Jedi characters that you stick in here, you can have them force training. And you can see that leads to the escape pod hatch. I mean, it'd be cool if it actually opened, but it's a fine enough feature as it is. And then here, it's another smuggling hatch, but I believe it's also the, um, it's a little maintenance hatch where they are trying to fix the Falcon and Force Awakens and the Empire Strikes Back. And let me see, I've got down here. Yeah, so these are the six porgs that they include with this set. Uh, I'll probably display them once I find a permanent spot for this in my collection somewhere. I'm a little low on space right now, so keeping these guys all bagged up for now so I don't lose them. And yeah, I figure one of these two smuggling compartments is the ideal spot for them, but I mean, they're pretty nice in and of themselves. They've got enough detail, so those are pretty cool. I don't know when I'll be able to display them. And now this over here, you've got the couch along with the Dejaric board, and I've heard many stories about these little guys being lost pretty much as soon as people display these. Let me get my camera to focus. So yeah, I think after I'm done with this review, I'm just gonna put those guys in a little Ziploc bag and probably store them with the pork somewhere. I want those, I want those to stay safe for a long time. You've got the Nava computer. You've got Han's little chair over there. The little seat where Obi-Wan sits down after Alderaan's been destroyed. And like I said, the stickers, a lot of people might not put them on just because they don't think they'll last, but I don't know. I just wanted to give a full review of everything that this ship comes with. Here, I'm going to take the Falcon. So you can see you've got the hatch here over to the cockpit. You've got Hondo on the computer here, in the little terminal. Like, they're featured in the ride when you walk inside, and you'll wait over in this area, get your picture taken with the Dejara board before they call you to take flight. And yeah, you can see, I don't know how well it's going to show up with the lighting. You can see Luke's training helmet and the training droid, which is also dangling right there. And so, let me show you some of the features uh, from the sound effects that these things make when the things, when the, when we see the interior. All right, my friends, we are cleared for takeout. R5, pre-flight diagnostics report. <laughs> Hey, 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 we are on a timetable here. Chewbacca, what is the holdup? Uh... Oh, wait, 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 my friends. I'm afraid we have picked up a hitchhiker. All right, scan the exterior of the Falcon for life forms. <laughs> All right, my friends. We are cleared for takeout. So the last feature I want to show you guys that distinguishes this version of the Millennium Falcon from the original trilogy are the sound effects that go off in the cockpit over here with Chewie and Hondo. And then after this, I'll switch over to the original trilogy side and then I'll do a quick run through of classic Falcon. And I don't know how well it's gonna show up on camera, but there are two lights behind the two characters over in the front. And we'll just do a quick run through of the sounds. R5, access the emergency power supply. So now we've seen the new sound bits that come with the Galaxy's Edge Smuggler's Run version of the ship. Now we're going to flip this switch over here. We're going to flip that and it's going to go back to the sounds of the original trilogy, Falcon. Nice little transition. Although the only downside is there is no off switch anymore. It just goes from Galaxy's Edge to original trilogy. So if you want this thing to be off, you're going to have to pull this panel off here, unscrew that uh, lid, and you're going to have to take the three AA batteries out but I don't think that'll be a problem for now. So we've got it over to original trilogy and we're gonna pop this guy off. Again, really like this though. It's a nice welcome addition. Um, I don't know, it was just one of the few changes in the new movies that I actually kind of liked. 
So now we've got our original dish. And once again, I'll just plug right in there. So now we've got our original Millennium Falcon. And I don't know if you guys have noticed, but over here in the cockpit, I took the liberty of putting in the true captain of the Millennium Falcon, Han Solo. And that's a really nice figure there. That's the Bespin Han. So I think if I'm not displaying this as Galaxy's Edge, I'm going to be displaying this in its Empire Strikes Back with all the accompanying characters. Although I do need to get a Hoth Princess Leia. So you, I don't know how well that showed up previously, but there are two lights behind them. So we're just going to go over a quick run through of the old sounds. Set that up. You may not look like much, but you've got it where it counts, kid. Chewie, get us out of here! <laughs> What's that flashing? We're losing a deflector shield. Both strap yourselves in. I'm going to make the jump to light speed. You're all clear, kid. Let's blow this thing and go home. Great shot, kid. That was one in a million. Come on, come on! Switch over. Let's hope we don't have a burnout. It may not look like much, but you've got it where it counts, kid. Alright, so those are those ones, and then I think it's this one that'll play a different sound. Okay, stay sharp. If you hold that down, it plays the cannons again. Don't worry. She'll hold together. Got him! I got him! Great, kid! Don't get cocky! That's it! We did it! Hold him off. Angle the deflector shield while I charge up the main guns. Okay, stay sharp. So now that we've got it switched over to the original trilogy sound effects, I thought I'd redecorate the little cabin in here with all of our classic characters. So we've got Bespin Luke over here, once again, training with the training droid. That just swings around. We've got classic R2, Han Solo sitting by the Nava computer, and then 3 pos tucked away over there watching R2 and Chewie have at it on the Dejaric board. And we'll just do another run through of the sound effects now in their original trilogy. With the blast shield down, I can't even see. How am I supposed to fight? You see? You can do it. You've taken your first step into a larger world. With the blast shield down, I can't even see. How am I supposed to fight? You see? You can do it. And I think if I just hold down the second button over here, it'll just do a run through of all the sound bits that light up the Dejaric board. It's not wise, it's a Wookiee. I suggest a new strategy, R2. Let the Wookiee win. Very cool. So yeah, it, I, think, um, I think I'm just gonna end up displaying this in its Empire Strikes Back configuration. Although, Luke wouldn't go there, I think I'd have to display him over in the medical bed. But, it's just, it's still very nice to see this ship occupied with the classic characters that we know and love. But nothing against Hondo or any of the new trilogy characters. This is just, this in its version, this will always be the Millennium Falcon to me and how I'll cherish it the most. But yeah, this, this interior can hold quite a lot of figures, and like I said, I am missing a Princess Leia. I'll have to get a new one of those in the, in the meantime, but like I said, if you can fit a character in there, you probably could fit two or three, or maybe even, maybe you could even fit a whole, whole other character inside there. But that is the interior with the lights and sounds from the original trilogy, and so let's go over to my final thoughts on the product. Actually, before we get into my final thoughts on the Falcon, I thought I'd do one last thing. I thought I'd shut off my studio lights here and we'd do one more run through of the lights and sounds just so you finally get to see them in their full glory. So I'll just do a quick run through of the original trilogy sound effects in the dark so you get to see the lights and I'll probably turn it around if you guys want to see the, the engines off again. But one thing I feel like I didn't utilize enough in this video or show off were the front lights here and the ones in the cockpit. So just give me a second, I'll shut off my lights and we'll do another run through.
Yeah, those are the light side. I mean, look, you could tell how bright those were. I don't think I have to spin it all the way around. You could see just on the back of my wall there. And I also realized that I forgot one more sound clip over for the original Trilogy configuration. So actually, if you hold down, I think it's this button. If you hold it down, it'll play the, uh, the ending of The Empire Strikes Back where R2 fixes the hyperdrive. It's not wise, upset a Wookiee. I suggest a new strategy, R2. Let the Wookiee win. My bad, that was the, uh, the jar record again. I think it's the second one right here. R2, come back at once. You don't know how to fix the hyperdrive. You did it! There we go. So, I think that's a full run through of all the sounds from both the Galaxy's Edge configuration and the classic trilogy sound effects of the Millennium Falcon. So, now we'll go over to my final thoughts on the Falcon and we'll end this review. And so, guys, that is a full review of the new Vintage Collection Smuggler's Run Millennium Falcon from Hasbro. What can I say that I haven't already said? This massive thing. I feel it's worth every penny. Some of you might find it's a little overpriced compared to the Legacy Collection from 2008, but me personally, since I was a little unfortunate I couldn't get that one back in the day, I'm happy that this has given me a second chance. And, you know, I kind of feel like it's justified for how big it is, the features that it incorporates, and the multiple lights and sounds now. So I feel like I've gotten the best version of this. And if you're interested, I highly recommend, uh, recommend picking this thing up. And if there's any nitpicks I have about it, it's just, you know, some of the figures, it's a little hard to actually get them to sit down in some of their uh, spots, like the chairs and the cockpit and in the, the main galley. But other than that, I think it's a masterpiece. I mean, Hasbro should continue to strive making great vehicles like this for fans, collectors of Star Wars and sci-fi paraphernalia. And, you know, uh, it's just a really nice piece and I look forward to keeping it in my collection for many years to come. So that's going to be it for this review, guys, and this has been Moonwalker1138, and I gotta say, I gotta give the Millennium Falcon a big thumbs up. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and follow for more. May the Force be with you.